Thanks to those of you who have checked out my Patreon, I am able to make a new series of Pokemon Epics. And a big shout out, of course, to the Nerd Therapist. Hello, Pokemon Master. My name is Berkey Potobi, and thank you for clicking on this video. Spoiler alert, although how can we avoid this spoiler? It was the number one trending on Twitter a few weeks ago. Ash Ketchum won the Alola League. Well done, Ash. Well done, buddy. Congratulations. You win your first Pokemon League apart from the Orange Islands and Battle Frontier, because apparently that doesn't count. And this one maybe doesn't count because it was the first League and that somehow doesn't count, apparently. Get away, people. Let Ash have, like, one. Oh, yeah, but he used the mythical Pokemon. Look, Ash has won this League. Ash Ketchum has been working very hard for many years, and it's honestly a surprise he hasn't won a League already. In fact, this victory of his, I watched the battle. I know I haven't been following the whole arc, but just looking at this league battle versus the other final matches that Ash Ketchum had across the other Pokemon leagues he's participated in, the Orange Islands and the Battle Frontier, this one just feels a little bit wrong. Or not so wrong that this is the one that they're celebrating, but rather there is a different Pokemon league that Ash Ketchum should have won. I think it's the one that you're thinking of. Let's take a quick step back in time. The Indigo League, Ash's first Pokemon League. He was obviously never gonna win this. And in fact, it's a bloody miracle he made it to top 16. He lost out to Richie, who was a trainer who had very similar Pokemon to his, but I don't think it was a skill-based thing. It was just Ash had this Charizard that wouldn't obey him. It was a three on three Pokemon battle. Ash took in good Pokemon. In fact, Richie had a Charmander against Ash's Charizard. But Ash was had an overlevel Pokemon that wasn't trained properly, and it was his first Pokemon League. There was no way he was going to win. Skip forward a generation, and we have the Silver Conference in Johto. Now this time, Ash got a little bit further. He got to top eight, and his final battle was against a character called Harrison right after he beat Gary Oak. Gary being his long-term rival of the whole show. Top eight is pretty good. We move forward a generation to home where he gets top eight again battling uh, a character whose name I have forgotten. It doesn't really matter. This is just a generic ace trainer, pretty much. I mean, they have personalities and they are explored in the surrounding episodes, but just like Harrison, these trainers are kind of throwaway characters. They're there for a couple of episodes to be the best of the best for Ash to face off against. Similar situation in Sinnoh, except he made top four, and this time our throwaway powerful character is Tobias, who has a Darkrai and a Latios. The Darkrai wiped out most of Ash's team and Ash's Sceptile eventually defeated it. Interesting that he had Sceptile in the Sinnoh League. I'll get to that. We get to Unova and Ash goes down a place, top 16, and then we get to Kalos, which is the one that everyone wants him to have won. He came second place. After all, he's been training for six generations. Of course, this would be where he does his absolute best despite last generation doing top 16, but we don't talk about that. And now here we are in the Alola League, he's won. In the meantime, he did also win the Battle Frontier and the Orange Islands, and to be honest, we should have been able to predict his win in the Alola League. The Orange Islands and Alola are the same thing. They're an archipelago of Pokemon Islands, where the gym leaders give you trials instead of necessarily gym battles. There are regional variants. It's just a lot of island oh, but they're, they're the same thing. They're, they're the same thing. Just Alola is the Orange Island scaled up. So we should have been able to predict Ash's victory all along, really. Ash also won the Battle Frontier, and while the Battle Frontier doesn't have a uh, championship at the end of it, what it does have is a bunch of Frontier Brains who are all incredibly powerful, and in fact, Ash was even given the choice to become a Frontier Brain, which he declined. So why did he win in these instances and not in the others? Well, first off, I want to look at the Orange Islands. In the Pokemon Orange Islands, Ash Ketchum's Charizard, his incredibly powerful Charizard, now obeyed him. On top of that, he had a roster of other very powerful Pokemon, and to say the Orange Islands doesn't really count, it's actually kind of really spitting in the face of all of Ash's hard work, because he does face what is essentially an Elite Four trainer or a champion. This guy has a Dragonite and a Gengar on his team. For Gen 1, these are the toughest of the tough Pokemon. I mean, what really would have made it more of a league? Eight gym leaders instead of four? Should he have had to have done a whole tournament to get to the champion? Either way, he battled an incredibly powerful trainer and he won. And he won with a team that he had traveled with all the way through Kanto right up to this point. He then goes to Johto and he continues on with that team plus a few new members. There, ultimately, he loses in the Johto League and in Hoenn, he decides to start again, scrapping his team. He takes on the Hoenn League and of course he wasn't gonna win. His Pokemon were an entirely new roster. He's basically in the same position he was in 
in the uh, Indigo Plateau, except he himself is more experienced. But the Pokemon on his team are not. Battle Frontier, maybe the reason he wins is because he starts combining those Pokemon he's been on an adventure with, with other Pokemon that he's been on other adventures with. In fact, Charizard and Squirtle and Bulbasaur are a big part of some of his final battles in the Battle Frontier. And in fact, his Charizard beat an Articuno. He won the Battle Frontier because he put his best foot forward, his best teammates who were the best trained, he put them all together in one team. Move forward to Generation 4 and he starts all over again. Now, the cool thing that he did here is when it came to the League, he started grabbing Pokemon from other regions that he had traveled with. So, like I say, his Sceptile ultimately defeated Darkrai, which is pretty cool, and his past Pokemon helped him get to top four. So it kind of makes sense that he got a little bit further. He only really lost out because he was up against a legendary, well, a mythical Pokemon. And at the time, we all felt really bad for Ash Ketchum. I mean, he'd get so far and lose against a Darkrai. Feels kind of cheap. I'd actually feel the exact same way if Gladion hadn't also used Cell Valley, but yeah, Ash used Melmetal, and that's how he won the Alola League. So uh, yeah, if, if Gladion didn't have that Cell Valley, I would have actually been pretty upset for him. Then we move to the Unova League, and no duh, he goes down to top 16, because yet again, not only does he start the region with new Pokemon, but the League, he doesn't incorporate any of his older Pokemon. Now, Kalos, he does do a lot, lot better. Despite the fact that he's starting with an all new team, but to be fair, he had three incredible assets on his team. He had two pseudo legendaries, kind of if you count Noivern as a pseudo legendary, and Gudra, and he had the Ash Greninja, which is a very special Greninja. Ash still really shouldn't have got as far as he did, given that he was with an all new roster of Pokemon, but he did incredibly well with some incredibly strong Pokemon and all power to him. I mean, that League stuff was really, really good. And now we get to Alola, where he is the most experienced he's ever been. He's got a mythical Pokemon on his team. So sure, he won. That's great. That's wonderful. Whatever. But really, to me, the league that he should have won was Johto. Like I say, his teams always perform better when he's Avengers style assembling his best Pokemon. He got top four in Sinnoh by combining his best Pokemon from the past with his best Pokemon of that region. He won the Battle Frontier doing that, and he had already won the Orange Islands before that. When it comes to Johto, Ash's team, especially his Kanto Pokemon, Pikachu, Charizard, Bulbasaur, these Pokemon were in a better position than any of Ash's other Pokemon across any of his other leagues. They had traveled with him the most, they had trained with him the most. On top of that, he wasn't up against any legendary opponent. Like I say, he lost to Harrison. And that really irks me. Because the reason that Harrison won is down to his first and last Pokemon, Kecleon and Blaziken. Now, Ash had massive type advantage against Blaziken. His Charizard, which was the final Pokemon he fought with, that had type advantage against Blaziken. I think like two of his other Pokemon, Totodile and... Uh, I'm sure there was something else on Ash's team. Ba basically, he had a big type advantage against Blaziken in this match, and he still lost. And why? Because Kecleon and Blaziken were Pokemon from Hoenn. And the way that the Pokemon animated series kind of angled it was that Pokemon from Hoenn are somehow stronger than Pokemon from other regions, and that's ultimately why Ash decides to go. The problem with that is Harrison never came back. He was never a long-term rival. Ash's longest-term rival was Gary Oak. The whole tournament had a kind of episode set up to their backstory and then you, you knew who he was because you had seen him in the show since the first episode. Ash overcame Gary finally in the round before. In my opinion, that should have been the final battle. That should have been where Ash Ketchum won and it would have made sense for him then to want to leave his Pokemon behind because he's beaten two Pokemon leagues in a row now, one small one and one proper one against his rival, which is when you play Pokemon Red and Blue, who do you battle at the end? You battle your rival as the champion. For Gary to have been Ash's final battle in the first proper tournament that he would have won outside of the Orange Islands, that would have been incredible. That was the moment Ash Ketchum should have won. Yes, don't get me wrong, his team was good in Sinnoh and it was good in Kalos, but he had less experience with those Pokemon versus the Pokemon that he had with him on his Johto team. And he was clearly experienced enough to beat powerful trainers like the one with the Dragonite. And honestly, he doesn't even use his Charizard that much between the Johto arc and then when it beats an Articuno in the Battle Frontier. That Charizard is strong. It was strong enough. 
His other Pokemon were strong enough. I think Pikachu takes on like some of the Regis in the Battle Frontier. Although granted, Pikachu does have more training. It's the only one to have consistent training. Although theories about its level resetting. The point is, while I am very happy for Ash Ketchum and the fact that he's won the Alola League, I really, really am. I'm glad we've got there. I'm looking forward to the future of the animated series. I gotta say, looking back on it now, Kalos, it was kind of cool that he came in second, actually. It really added some extra heat for this new series in Alola. With Unova, he was never going to win that. We were, he didn't include any of his old Pokemon. With Sinnoh, you know, he didn't really stand a chance against Darkrai so much, so that's totally fair. He had no legendary Pokemon of his own. In Hoenn, it made sense that he lost. He had an all-new team, just like in Unova. And actually, same again for the Indigo League. It was it Obviously, he was going to lose it in the first league. But just like the Battle Frontier and the Orange Island before it, the Johto League is where Ash Ketchum definitively, in my opinion, should have won. What's next for old Ashy boy? Well, I actually suspect we won't be following the journey of this Ash Ketchum anymore. The trailer for the new animated series, and this might have even been confirmed by the time this video gets to you. Now that I'm working on my new Pokemon Epics, I got to do a little, like, little bit of pre-recording, so there's that. Uh, but yeah, my expectations for the next series is that we're not going to follow this Ash Ketchum, the same one we've been following for all this time. Although, theories about how they're a different Ash Ketchum. In my opinion, we're probably going to be following the journey of this Ash Ketchum from I Choose You, the movie, and the one that came out after that, The Power of Us. I reckon we're going to see more of an anthology series with a, this kind of a nameless, timeless Ash that just kind of travels around different regions and sees the sights to be seen there. But I don't know, maybe I'm totally wrong. Maybe the trailers come out and we're definitely following the same Ash. Anyway, let me know what you think. Is there a different league that he definitely should have won? Let me know in the comments. Be sure to leave a like, otherwise my Snorlax here will sit on you. Thank you for watching this video, and of course... So high Pokemon Masters. This is Ash Ketchum. You just watched a video by Bird Keeper Toby. That makes you a Pokemon Master.